Both Austin and Denver are frequently seen on all sorts of top 10 lists from best places to live to the top cities in the world. And the list goes on and on. Recently, I've had numerous clients relocate to Austin from Denver and clients move from Austin to Denver. So I really wanted to take a minute and dive into what makes these cities different from one another and what ultimately makes each of them so special. Although these cities have some obvious differences, there's a bit of overlap that I think is definitely worth comparing. So today I'm going to break down everything you need to know when considering a move to Austin or Denver. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's first talk size and we're going to start with Austin. First, I'm going to give you the data and then explain how this actually impacts you. So Austin is the capital of Texas and the 10th largest city in the country. The population of the entire Austin Metro is estimated to be slightly over 2.4 million people and the city of Austin itself sits right around 1 million people. So you can see it's a pretty good size all in all. Denver is also the capital of Colorado and surprisingly, Denver is not wildly different when it comes to population in comparison to Austin, but it's somewhat flip-flopped. Denver's entire Metro population is larger than the Austin in MSA and it sits a little bit closer to 3 million people. Now the city of Denver itself is actually a little bit smaller than Austin sitting at just over 700,000 people. So you can see there's a slight variation there, just slightly reversed. Let's talk landmass for a moment to paint a slightly better picture of everything. Austin proper sits on roughly 300 square miles of land and Denver sits on 155 square miles. So almost half the landmass of Austin. So Although Austin has a larger population, it's also spread out amongst a larger area, which can really help offset that congestion and some of those downsides to living in a larger city. Before I jump into more of the recreational comparisons, like the food scene and things to do in both of these cities, let's talk about traffic and what you can expect in terms of your particular commute. As I researched this more, it really caught me by surprise. A lot of people like to complain about traffic in Austin, mainly those who are moving from smaller cities where they just haven't experienced our type of traffic. What surprised me though, is that Denver actually has this way worse than Austin. The reason for that really seems to come down to the road infrastructure itself. The city and area were not really built to support thousands of new residents each year, as well as millions of visitors into that Denver Metro. So for those living in the area, the average commute time during the week is one to one and a half hours. And if you're looking to go into the mountains over the weekend, which is a big draw for people living in the area, you better plan ahead because this can actually take multiple hours with the amount of vehicles on the road and the popularity of people headed out into the mountains. Of course, this is very dependent on exactly where you live and work. In Austin, it's not so bad all in all, especially in comparison to this. If you live and work in Austin, you should expect a commute of roughly no longer than 30 minutes. If you live in the suburbs and are commuting into downtown, it would probably be wise though to account for a 45 minute commute during those peak traffic times. Now, don't get me wrong, Austin could also beef up their road infrastructure with the amount of growth we're continuing to experience, but in comparison, we're in better shape than Denver when it comes to traffic and your individual commute times. Before moving right along, I wanna welcome you to the channel or back to the channel where we're putting out videos for you each week about what it's like living in Austin. By the way, if you're thinking about buying or selling a home anywhere in the greater Austin Metro, my real estate team, Von Baron Group, and I would love to be your real estate resource of choice. So be sure to call, text, or email, and we'll connect with you right away. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any of the weekly content that we'll be putting together for you. Moving right along, when you're looking for a place to live, you're also probably quite interested in knowing the overall aesthetic of the area in terms of topography and landscape. Both Austin and Denver differ in that regard, and I'm gonna break this down a little bit further. Now, in Austin, you're situated in the Texas Hill Country with more of the rolling hills landscape, especially as you head west of downtown in that city center. Denver is situated between mountain ranges, so you'll find that the city itself 
is flatter overall until you really start venturing out towards the mountains. In terms of opportunities for outdoor activities like hiking, biking, and swimming in the natural springs and lakes, both cities offer an incredible amount to do. Now, on that note, Denver has defined seasons throughout the year, which Austin doesn't have as much, including snow. So if you like to ski or snowboard, you're a one and a half to three plus hour drive to many of these great spots in the Denver Metro in the mountains. In the summer, you're also able to take part in a lot of these other outdoor offerings like hiking, biking, and fishing. Outside of having snow to ski or snowboard, you'll find similar outdoor offerings here in the Austin area. With our hilly topography, there are really great trails and green belts for mountain biking and hiking. And similar to Denver, Austin also has a handful of lakes and rivers where you're going to find people boating and kayaking at all times throughout the year. Austin is pretty unique in comparison to many cities throughout the country in the sense of how it lays out. Austin has an incredibly vibrant downtown with the Colorado River running right through the city. This section of the Colorado River is also known as Lady Bird Lake or Town Lake, depending on when you arrived in Austin. This creates a really nice blend of urban downtown lifestyle and outdoor activities all right in the heart of Austin. Even the neighborhoods just outside of downtown, south of downtown, and even central Austin really reap the benefits of having this really nice outdoor offering right in the middle of the city. On that note, Denver offers something similar, which is the South Platte River running right through the city as well. Here, you're going to find people kayaking, fishing, and just hanging out along the banks of that particular river. You also have parks throughout the city and really nice greenery similar to Austin. In in Austin, you will also find natural springs and lakes, including one very popular swimming hole in the middle of the city, Barton Springs Pool. Especially during our warm summer months, it's a really nice spot to cool off or just work on your tan if you're into that. There is also a popular lake west of the city, Lake Travis, which is used year round. Be sure to check out my Lake Travis and Lakeway video playlist. If living near the lake is something that might interest you, there are some really, really nice, fantastic neighborhoods in that pocket as well. When considering an area, cost of living is very important and a big reason people have chosen to move to Austin and Texas in general in recent years. Although both Denver and Austin have experienced an increase in housing costs due largely to rapid business and population growth, they remain very affordable in comparison to major metros throughout the country. And I wanna highlight that a little bit further. At the time of this video, you're not gonna believe this, but both Austin and Denver have the same median home price of $525,000. Both Austin and Denver's housing markets have normalized a lot over the last year, creating a much more balanced and enjoyable experience for both home buyers and sellers. So it's a really nice time to take advantage of the market, probably in both areas if you are exploring. To take it one step further, according to nerdwallet.com, the cost of living in Austin is 10% lower than what you're going to find in Denver. With median home prices leveling out between these two cities though, the cost of living in each city is likely going to be a bit more comparable since the bulk of those expenses seem to be attributed to housing costs overall. Still though, Austin has an edge when it comes to that lower cost of living that so many people have been looking for. Perhaps you're moving to Austin for work relocation, or maybe you're just looking for a new place to call home. It's important to understand the industry and major employers in each of these areas to ultimately help you make a better decision. Austin has become a significant tech hub, even earning the nickname Silicon Hills. The city's thriving tech industry and startup culture are certainly very appealing to people, especially in the tech sector and small business owners who are really looking for more of that entrepreneurial environment, which Austin has so much to offer in that regard. This has also created a very laid back feel to the city, which a lot of people also really love. Now, Austin is home to Dell, IBM, Oracle, Samsung, Apple, and the list goes on and on. Many people are even now relocating to the area to work for Tesla or the boring company in some capacity, which has created really dynamic growth within and around all of the greater Austin Metro. The Austin MSA is actually one of the fastest growing large US job markets in the entire country and has one of the lowest unemployment rates. So you can see that it could be a very appealing area for 
many, many people. What isn't necessarily at the forefront of people's minds is that Austin is also the state capital of Texas. So we have many government related job headquarters here in Austin. We're also home to one of the top ranked universities in the country, the University of Texas at Austin, which is also a very large employer in the Austin Metro. Other industries that not many people immediately think of in the Austin area include healthcare and medical, large distribution centers like Amazon, and even grocery retailers such as the Whole Foods headquarters and our very large statewide grocer, HEB. Denver also has a very robust job market and often sits alongside Austin when it comes to the best locations for businesses and great job opportunities. Also being the state capital, you can expect the largest employers to be government related positions. In addition to that, you'll find large employers like the university system and aerospace as one of the largest private sectors in Denver, along with energy. Of course, being near the Rocky Mountains, you can expect this region to be a big player when it comes to fossil fuel production. Let's dive into weather. Starting with Denver, people often think that it's cold and covered with snow. If you drop over an hour towards the mountains, of course, you're going to find a lot of snow, but not so much within the city of Denver itself. Colorado is actually in line with Texas in terms of its sunny days being one of the sunniest states in the entire country. Not many people realize that. The winters in Denver are pretty mild compared to much of the country, but they're still much colder than what you're going to experience overall in the Austin area. Austin's winters are typically mild with minimal days of freezing temperatures, so it's really appealing to those coming from the states where they're shoveling snow and having to live in those freezing temperatures for so many months out of the year. It's still cold enough though in Austin to enjoy your nice jackets and a fire here and there, but you won't be shoveling snow or paying an arm and a leg in utility bills. When people think of Colorado in the summer, they typically think of nice, cooler summers. While this can be the case in many areas, including some of those days in the Denver area, it actually might get a little bit warmer than you expect in Denver specifically. In recent years, both Austin and Denver experience much hotter summers than their respective average so a lot of people think that this is the norm and that's not necessarily the case. So to dispel any myths, in Denver, you can expect a high average of 92 degrees during their hottest month of July. In Austin, you can expect a high of 97 degrees during our hottest month of August. Of course, both cities can creep up into the triple digits, but that's really not the norm most years. Although Austin also has a drier climate overall, and certainly compared to other cities like Houston, which are closer to the Gulf, Denver has a semi-arid climate, which essentially means that it's halfway to being a desert. In comparison, Austin is more humid than this, but I don't think of Austin as a humid place. I would consider places like Florida, Houston, and those states along the Gulf as being very humid locations and in my opinion, almost intolerable. This drier climate overall can certainly be the saving grace on those really hot days. Of course, overall, Austin is going to be hotter than Denver, especially during those summer months, but this is when you're going to find the pools, springs, and lakes in our area being used incredibly frequently. This next one is one of my all-time hobbies and that's venturing out to new restaurants. The more foodie it is, the better. In this particular category, Austin takes the win when it comes to the culinary scene between each city. You'll find Austin on many top 10 lists for best food cities along major metros like New York, Chicago, and even LA. In fact, a handful of our restaurants have now expanded into these larger markets like LA, Houston, and even Denver. Austin is home to a great sushi spot called Uchi, which has recently opened in both LA and Denver, ironically. There's a lot of crossover between Austin and Denver, so I think we're going to start seeing more of this over over the coming years. Overall, Austin's food scene is quite casual, which a lot of people like, even the nicest of restaurants. We have a ton of great spots, with one of my favorites that I've said in many videos before being Barley Swine. Austin also loves its food trucks, which Denver has been incorporating as well. Austin is very much known for its Tex-Mex options and a variety of popular barbecue joints that you'll see even on a lot of television channels and Netflix highlights. So we're definitely on the map in a lot of ways when it comes to food. We also have a handful of fantastic sushi spots that I mentioned earlier, and many of those more 
foodie oriented restaurants. Like Denver, we're home to numerous breweries as well as several well-known distilleries like Tito's, Deep Eddy, and Garrison Brothers. Denver's food scene has really been growing steadily over the years though, with a real focus on farm to table dining, craft breweries, kind of like what you're going to find in Austin and different culinary concepts throughout the city. And also having a really diverse population throughout Denver really provides a wide range of dining options and different food choices, which is a huge draw all over that Denver Metro. If you're moving to a city, you typically want to make sure you have plenty to do in terms of entertainment and activities. So let's talk more about music, the art scene, and even professional sports in both cities. Austin has been hailed as the live music capital of the world, the city's vibrant music and art scene with numerous festivals, concerts, and cultural events can be a huge draw for those who appreciate an active and really creative atmosphere all throughout the city. Austin has a local symphony and ballet as well as live theater, so no shortage within the art scene. We're also home to several big music festivals that you've probably heard of over the years, which include Austin City Limits and South by Southwest. These two Two festivals alone bring in hundreds of thousands of visitors to the city each year just for these events alone. It's pretty impressive. Austin also has many great museums to visit throughout the city with a really rich history, especially being the capital of Texas. You'll find a lot of that theme throughout the city. Denver also has a thriving music scene with a wide range of live music venues and its own festivals. While it may not necessarily have the same reputation as Austin in terms of music, Denver offers really unique experiences like concerts at the iconic Red Rocks Amphitheater, which is amazing, where you're going to find many of the big names and musicians coming through throughout the year. You're also going to find really great museums throughout Denver as well, including the Denver Art Museum and their Museum of Contemporary Art. Similar to Austin, there's also a creative flair in many areas which attracts artists and creatives. For now, I'd say that Austin offers more of that eclectic flair in more parts of the city, but Denver certainly has its offerings throughout. This one gets me every time and it's still one of my pain points with Austin. Luckily, there are many other things to do in Austin outside of professional sports, so it's not that bad. But when we're comparing Austin and Denver, it's not really a tough call between the two. Austin's newest pro sports team is Austin FC, our major league soccer team, and it's an absolute blast highly recommend that you check it out if you're in the area. Although this is a big addition to Austin sports scene, Denver definitely takes the win when it comes to pro sports. Denver has a professional team for nearly every sport. Of course, Austin is home to the University of Texas at Austin, which is a huge college sports presence all throughout the year. And we have great minor league teams like the Round Rock Express baseball team and the Austin Spurs, which is actually our G League team to the San Antonio Spurs NBA team. I'm hoping that as Austin's growth continues, we may have some more pro sports options, but for now it's mainly Austin FC, college sports at the University of Texas at Austin, and these minor league options that I mentioned. So here, Denver definitely takes the win. Ultimately, the decision of where to live weighs heavily on a variety of factors, including job opportunities, lifestyle preferences, climate, housing costs, proximity to family and friends, and so many different personal interests. If a thriving job market, vibrant creative scene, and relaxed outdoor lifestyle appeal to you, then Austin could be your spot. If you're seeking more of those weekend getaways in the mountains and being one with nature, so to speak, then being located in Denver and closer to those offerings might actually make get the better spot for you. Visiting both cities, exploring their offerings, and really assessing how they align with your goals is of course critical in the discovery process. So consider factors such as housing availability, transportation, and even community amenities in the various neighborhoods that you're exploring. Consider all of these in your ultimate decision. And be sure to call, text, or email me so we can talk more about your unique scenario when it comes to living in Austin. If there is anything new or interesting you picked up from this video, be sure to let me know what that was in the comments. I would love to hear from you in this video and others. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, be sure to do so because we're putting out videos every week all about what it's like living here in Austin. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and reach out to us as your Austin real estate resource. We'll see you on the next video.